Hello and welcome to Reinfused. Today's video is a very quick one about uh, the Pi Storm. It's not about building one or or trying to get one working as such. It's just about the thing that I found the hardest to achieve because there's a lot of really good videos out there about setting this thing up and and even building it from the scratch. But uh, the thing that I struggled with was getting hard files to work. So fake the virtual hard drives in the uh, in the Pi Storm itself. Now maybe there's probably lots of ways of doing this and it might maybe other people find it very easy but this is just my uh, my issues that I figured if I struggled with it and other people might struggle with it as well and so I'm just going to share the way I made it work right so here we are and we have win UAE loaded this is where we're going to do the vast majority of the work actually and um, it's a handy thing just to set up these hard drive images and we can install uh, an operating system on them as well if you want to. Obviously you can do this on that part of it on the actual Amiga if you want to. And so obviously we're using the default 68020. Um, keep all of the other stuff the same. Um, for the ROM, I've actually... So we're going to be using 3.1. And that's the same ROM as the one that we're going to be using on our actual Pi Storm itself. Now we need to use floppy disks. So we need to install from Workbench. So, and we may as well just turn on all the drives so that we can have all of the disks ready. Um, we've only got four drives, but it only it kind of asks them in the weird order as well. So we're going to do one, two, and then four and five, I think it is. And it'll last for other ones, so we're going to have to use the F12 mem mem uh, menu to change disks as it asks them. We're also going to increase the floppy emulation drive speed to 200, uh, just to save us some time. And now we need to actually set up the hard drives. So we click here on the CDs and the hard drives, and we're going to create ourselves a new hard file. Now we have to type in a size, uh, about 1400 megs, which is 1.4 gigs. That's two 700 meg partitions and hit create and give it a name. I'm overwriting an existing one here, but uh, give whatever name you want. And then once we've done that, we can uh, click on this, which is really important. That button is really, really important. Now I click on these, so it fills in the fills, but I don't know if it's important or not. And I give it a name of UDH0. And uh, I stuck a colon then. I don't know if that's important or not, but it seems to work. And then do OK. Now we've put that in there. Now if we reset, the drives don't always turn up and it doesn't matter. Um, as long as we can see them inside the tool, which we're going to modify in a second. Yeah, there we go. So it hasn't actually, the drives haven't turned up in this run. So what we need to do is double click on the install uh, disk and then go into HD tools and then we're going to go into HD toolbox. Now we can't load this up because it's not set up for this device so make a copy of it in the RAM disk that should be there with, with WinUAE and when that finishes we're going to go in there we're going to single click on it and then we're going to go to information because we need to make a small modification. We need to click on this line and then change SCSI to UAEHF. So that's UAEHF. And that's the device that uh, UAE uses to read and write disks. Now, once we've done that, we can load up the RAM disk version of this tool by double clicking. And now we'll see our drive at the top. We need to change drive type, define new, and then reconfiguration, and it'll fill in all the details for us. Yeah, just to continue. Then once that's done, we do OK and OK again. Then we can go in now and partition the drive, although it should automatically split into two, yep, like that. So one UHD zero, one UHD one, and UHD zero should be bootable. Let's do OK again, save changes. And then if we exit, we now need to reboot. It should, sometimes it tells you to reboot, sometimes it doesn't, but we do need to reboot. So F12 on Win UAE and then restart. Now we still have the disks in, so it should still boot up with those disks. All right, and after it's after it's rebooted, you should get now two disks: UDH0 and UDH1. So if we now format them, and we'll call this one main. 
and you can leave all these things checked, uh, ticked, and then also put quick format. There we go, and the same for this one. And we'll call this one data. Doesn't matter what you call it really. And again, quick format. Right, so now we have those disks formatted, we can go into our installer. Uh, we go to install, we go to our install thing here, choose our language. Most of this will just be agreeing. So English, don't care about printers, British keyboard. And now I should try to install onto main. This is where the benefit of having those multiple disks, virtual disks work comes in and also increasing the transfer speed. Right, now the installation is complete, we can oops, press F12 and eject all the disks. Now hopefully, there we go, <laughs> we have booted up with our installed hard drive and our data drive as well. Now the other thing you can do if you've got files on your computer that you want to copy across is in this um, CD and hard drives you can also mount a directory so just any directory on your PC and then you'll be able to copy files from that folder and into your data drive and then once but once that's done and you've got all your files across you've got your working solution so now we just need to copy it onto the Pi which we'll cover briefly um, just the basics of it now Okay, so hopefully you set up uh, SSH on the Raspberry Pi and it's connected to your network. If not, if you follow the instructions on the PyStorm GitHub to get that far, then uh, this should make this a bit easier. I will say the instructions kind of tell you to do everything with the Pi connected to inside the Amiga already. I didn't do that. I think it's easier to set up all the basics of the actual Raspberry Pi and install and compile the PyStorm software outside and then only connect it when you actually have to do the flashing of the of the actual Pi Storm itself. Uh, in fact, you probably don't even need it for that part, to be honest, but I did it for that part, so it's just more convenient. I, well, I personally find it more convenient. But anyway, we're assuming that. We assume you know the uh, IP address of your Raspberry Pi. Um, now, by default, the username you want to log in as is Pi wherever your IP address is, and the default password is uh, Raspberry. Now you definitely want to change that if, you, uh, if you're if you keeping your Pi controlling your Amiga on a wireless network, just in case. Uh, so if you log in and it's the one you installed PyStorm, you should have one, at least one folder called PyStorm. And if you CD into that PyStorm, uh, we see these directories. So I've made a directory called HDDs, so HDDS there, and that has all of my drives. So I've got several of them because I want lots and lots of data across. Um, now, if I, in the root of the PyStorm directory, if I edit the right, default, so default.cfg, this is the configuration file. Now, if we look down here, these are all the configuration bits for the uh, Pi Storm, but the bit we want is down here. So this turns on Pi Ski. So if this has got a hash next to it, you want to remove that hash. And then for every drive you've got, you want one of these, uh, and zero being the primary drive, then one and two, etc. Up to six, I believe. Yep, six. And this is uh, all the folders in here are relative to the Pi Storm folder. So my HDDS directory is in the PyStorm folder, so I just have HDDS slash and the file name uh, 
just to uh, instead of having any other mapping in there so that will work so anyway that's we're jumping ahead of ourselves so the actual transferring the file so we exit this we don't need to be logged into the pine to do that so right so i've got a folder here and i've got my image that i created on the uh, windows pc and so we want to use scp so scp works similar to ssh so we want to do scp and we want to copy this file there we go and we want to copy it to the raspberry pi so we do exactly the same thing so pi at and then the ip address and then a colon and then we want the path now this again is relative to the person logged in so if we do pystorm slash hdds that should copy this file in so what will happen now is it will ask for the password which we can put in again and then it will now copy that file across if we now connect back into the raspberry pi and again go into the pi storm and the hdd s directory there we go so now we have our new drive file folder is uh, file is in there and if we again if we edit the default.config and scroll down now you'll if you're, you're doing this for the first time you won't have any of these so you'll just set it as the zero one and just put hdds slash and in our case new drive hdf case sensitive as well i believe so be careful with that uh and then yeah we if we want to add another one we could just put in the next available number scuzzy free by scuzzy free yep yes and new drive dot hdf and now we'd have that drive as another one when we load up windows uh workbench <laughs> not windows very much not windows um yeah so that's how we set up the drive and as you can see up here in fact we've got our our rom type so this is where we set our kickstart 3.1 rom in there and again it's relative so you see we've got no path so that kickstart rom is just in our pystorm directory probably we need to and put it into a a firmware directory or a, a kickstart directory but yeah anyway so that's how that works so now you can go in and you can restart your uh, the emulator um, if you've got it running as a service then you can just kill the current version of it and it will restart it should restart automatically otherwise just reboot the pi that will work as well and your drive should be picked up right let's move to the summary right that's it hopefully that helps some people like i said there's probably people out there that found this very easy to do and uh, there's probably multiple ways of doing it this is the way that i found worked for me uh, and it seems to work anyway um plus it was quite a convenient way of just being able to get software onto those uh, onto the card before i put it across to the pi storm anyway again like i said hopefully someone found it useful right thanks for watching if you like the video please hit like if you really like the video please hit subscribe if you didn't like the video or you have something else to say then please leave it in the comments below and remember you can join our membership thing down this tier somewhere uh from as little as a pound um which will give you access early access to videos and some exclusive videos as well um you can do the same on patreon for the same benefits and uh, the bell icon thing, yes. Don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can be told about future videos. See you next time. The present is horrible. The future looks bleak. Remember our childhood to get us through the week. We're getting re-enthused. Back to the past and the things we used. We all know that our pasts were great. Escaping the things that